Romans chapter 12. Tonight I just want to share. If it is preaching, great. If it is teaching, wonderful. But I'm sharing. I'm sharing a verse of scripture that has made tremendous impact on my spiritual experience, on my life as a believer. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. The power of the mind. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. It reads, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Isn't that awesome? I want to do the will of God. I want to do the will of God. I want to do the will of God. God says you can't do the perfect will of God outside of the functioning of your mind. In the first place, he says, to experience a transformation, your mind must be renewed. For your mind to be effectively renewed, you must make a choice not to conform to this world. That's the first line. And be not conformed to this world. Make a choice. I will not go in the same direction with them. I will not do it the way they do it. I will not say it the way they say it. I will not handle it the way they handle it. I will not run my life the way they run their home. Simple. I will not run after the fashion and the fad of this world. If ever you will experience a transformation in your Christian experience, make a solid choice to be different. Whatever it will cost. Make a solid choice to be different. Every Christian who refuses to be transformed will be conformed. And because he is not supposed to be conformed, he will become deformed. And be not conformed, but be ye transformed. So if he refuses to be transformed, of course he has conformed. And if he conforms, then there's no way it will not become deformed. Because he was designed to be transformed. Make a solid choice to travel in a completely different direction from the one they are traveling in. That was one of the solid lessons. Solid basic lessons I learned as a believer. That even before I know what the whole Bible says, if I turn 180 degrees and I travel in the opposite direction from which the world is traveling, I will be very close to the will of God. If I say the direct opposite of what they are saying, what I'm saying to a very large extent will tally with what the world wants me to say. That's the truth. <laughs> just making a choice not to conform your spiritual success your, your success in life hangs on that word making a choice not to conform I believe that this is a choice every Nigerian must make because the legacy that our fathers have left us is nothing enviable we met poverty in the land we met failure in the land so, to now say, <laughs> like they say, let us do it the way they do it, so that it can be the way that it has always been, God forbid. With all the poverty that I met here, I won't do it the way they did it. I won't. I will do it the way they did it in the world, so that it can be for me, according as it was for them in the world. 
but this one oh, in this country if you said that in america great <laughs> you would have a better chance but here so make a choice not to be conformed not to be conformed there are many christians today who are in bondage to what people will say they are in bondage they have conformed because they are not ready to run against the meal or the wind of popular opinion you have to make a choice it's either you are very popular as a spiritual failure or <laughs> you are unpopular but you are a success the interesting thing is this eventually when you succeed you will still be popular because nobody can argue with success and be not conformed to this world It says, but be ye transformed. Isn't this interesting? Not by praying. Not by fasting marathon. Except if those two will have the transformation of your mind, you missed it. It's by the renewing of your mind. Every major breakthrough in this world is traceable to a breakthrough in somebody's mind pure truth there is no breakthrough that has happened anywhere outside of a breakthrough that took place in somebody's mind and that holds true for every believer every believers every major breakthrough in the life of a believer can be traced to a major breakthrough in his mind every major breakthrough in your life you think about it every measure of progress you have made first of all took place in your mind before it ever became a reality as the truth so when we realize that you can't break through outside until you break through inside we see that it becomes a very necessary thing for everybody who comes into the body of christ to have a brain wash what i call a brain scrub because we all come into the body of christ with cobwebs cobwebs that will not allow us to break through everybody who is born into the body of christ needs a major brain scrub to succeed in this christian experience you will be shocked at how much tradition and prejudice is still logged into many believers and will not allow them to go forward and until you begin to make a serious effort to have a transformation of your, your mind you won't know how strong your mind is on certain things and how those strongholds have refused to allow you to get ahead everybody needs a brain scrub whatever measure of progress a man makes in life that is not traceable to progress in his mind he will lose it i can guarantee that by the word every measure of change positive change that a man experiences in life that is not traceable to change in his own mind he will lose it it cannot remain it cannot that is why if a man in his heart has never comprehended himself has honing 10 million naira in his account if you give him 30 he will end up being a poorer man than he was before you gave him the money his life will come back and measure with the level and the degree of transformation he has had in his mind every major breakthrough is traceable to a breakthrough in the human mind I read a story, I shared it with the staff in the office on Tuesday. I read a story in a, in a book on Monday titled You Can Go Up by a couple, Bill and the Strange Fellow. And one of the chapters there, they told the story that the barbers and hairstylists of America were to have a national convention 
and they wanted to, you know, elevate the people's views about their profession in America. So they hired a young man, a public relations consultant, and immediately an idea flashed across his mind, and he went to work. He went straight to the slums and picked out a young man, a tramp, a derelict and a drug addict. He was looking haggard, his hair was overgrown, his beard was dirty, and he went and struck a deal with the young man that he would, if he would just agree to do a few things with him, that he would pay him a particular amount of money. Of course, you know drug addicts need money now. The guy agreed. So he took him, took him to the photographer, the best photographer in town. So they took a series of pictures of the young man, the way he was. Then this young man now took the tramp and took him to have a steam bath. They gave him a good haircut, gave him a good shave, and then they took him back to, back to the photographer, and then they took another series of pictures. Then the best clothing store in town, the manager now arranged some professional clothes for him. Suit, tie, shoes, everything, socks, speaks pan. Then they took him to the photographer again and took the third snap. And then this young consultant went and developed those pictures into full life-size photographs and took them to the convention. The hotel where they were to have the convention, the young man put those pictures, the three pictures, the three best pictures from each group, <laughs> put them at the lobby. So anybody who came in will be shocked. Ah, the same man in the first picture was the same man in the third picture, but he had changed. He now wrote at the top, see what the barbers and hairstylists of America can do for you. Isn't that wonderful? Good. So they told, they now instructed the man that for the whole week he should stand at the lobby in a very conspicuous place where people could see him so that he could discuss with uh, all the people who wanted to talk to him, you know. It, it made the headlines in all the major newspapers in America. The kind of transformation the barbers and hairstylists of America can do for you. Now, during the week, the assistant hotel manager saw the young man and really liked him and decided to help him. So he now fixed an appointment with him that after the convention on Monday, that the young man should come. He will arrange a job for him. He now started calling his friends, so many of them, to so please take this young man and put him on a job that, that had a great deal of advancement opportunity. And one of them agreed to take the young man. On Monday, 10 a.m. was the appointment. Ah, the hotel manager thought the guy would be there by 9. He wasn't there anyway. 10, he didn't come. 11, 12, in fact, the, young, the, the hotel manager had to have his lunch there in the office just in case the man called. He didn't want to miss him. Till the evening, he didn't come. Ah! What could have happened? So he forgot about him. Several months after, they were just looking through the basement. <laughs> they were looking through the basement. And then he saw those pictures again. Ah! He just stopped what he was doing, picked that picture, one of the pictures, and went to the area, the slum, where they said they brought him from. I was asking people, do you know this guy? Nobody knew him. Do you know this guy? Do you know this guy? Nobody knew him. Ha. While he was asking, suddenly it just dawned on him. It was the best picture he took. So he ran back to the basement and took the original one. How they met the guy. By the time he took it back, within one hour he found him. <laughs> the tie was gone. The suit was dirty and soiled. His beard had grown back. The hair was long again. And there you saw what the barbers and hairstylists of America could do for a man. They can change him on the outside, but they can't change him inside. Hallelujah. <laughs> that story simply tells us. Every measure of change or improvement that a man experiences in life that is not traceable to a breakthrough in information in his mind is wasted. 
it will not last. What we need is a change inside. And that's what Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says. Be ye transformed. Now, the Greek word translated transformed there is metamorphu, from which we have the English word metamorphosis. You will move from one phase to the other by the renewing of your mind. Your mind has the power to make or break you. Your mind has the power to make or break you. If anybody comes to the knowledge of this truth, I wish therefore that everybody will lay tremendous importance, tremendous priority on the renewing of their minds. A trump inside is a trump outside. A failure inside is a failure outside. The only thing that keeps men poor is what I call a poverty man consciousness. And until we break free from it, there is no root out, no other root. A man must prosper inside before he begins to prosper from outside. What is the difference between one human being and the other? Their minds. The spirit man and the function of their minds. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Who he is inside is who he is outside. It, listen, it's not a function of the measure of opportunities available to a man. Oh, no. Uh, they say it was because he went to school. Nonsense. So the reason why he's more prosperous than I am is because he went to school. Nonsense again. I came across a statistic yesterday. A man took, conducted a research in America. As of the year he conducted that research, there were 4,043 millionaires in America. That's quite a while ago. 4,043 millionaires in America. Of the 4,043, only 89 finished secondary school. 89. Only 89 finished secondary school. You know what that tells me? That going to school sometimes is a disadvantage. Listen, I've studied a lot about success and I found out this. Except God helps you to discover your definite major purpose in life, you learn in school more out why your ideas will not work than why they will work. You learn how they will not work. <laughs> the man who started Korea Express, Federal Express in America, he went to Yale University, one of the top class universities in the U.S. His final project work was the idea of this Korea thing. His professors called him C and called him to explain why he gave him a C. He told him that that idea can never work. That is a very sound idea, but he gave him reasons why it will never take off the ground. That idea has turned that man into a multi-millionaire who, who can employ that professor and pay, pay him and after he retires, pay his retirement benefit and pay his gratuity <laughs> and pay his children. He gave he called him a C because as a professor, his professionalism and analytical ability helped him to see so many ways by which it will work. Thank God for the young man. So you know what? I discovered from that statistic, I just realized. Those who did not go to school, thank God, they did not have the opportunity of learning how it will not work. All they know is how it will work. Hallelujah. <laughs> Once they work their ideas out, it works for them. It's the mind. It's the mind. Listen. The word education is from the Latin word educo, which means to derive knowledge from within. It explains more the English word intuition. Intuition is a combination of two words, in and tuition. Tuition is teaching. Education is not what the teacher said. Education is the revelation you receive from what the teacher said. How it will practically affect your life. Education is not sitting down in the church to hear what the pastor has to say, 
but realizing getting some sparks of light shining in your mind realizing how what the pastor will affect your practical situation now outside and move your life ahead simple be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind what is the difference between the roadside mechanic and the mechanical engineer thank you is their mind simple it's not because one is taller than the other one it's not because one is fatter than the other one Mm -mm. is their mind simple (laughs) simple one person just cannot see more than carrying a spanner and running after broken down vehicles on third main lambry that's all he has seen Someone in this church was asking another brother, what is your goal and your vision in life? I'm jobless. I'm a driver. Once I get this driving job, that's all. <laughs> he said, after driver, so what else? He said, ah, he said I'm a driver. <laughs> Once I have work to do, <laughs> that's all. There is nothing anybody can do after that. There is nothing anybody can do after that. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There are drivers who have died driving other people. And there are drivers who have gone to the point where they went ahead and bought vehicles and had many drivers working for them. They didn't go to school. Some of them can't even write their names correctly. And they become employers of other drivers. What's the difference? Their mind their mind be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind every measure of progress i have experienced in life i thank god is traceable to some to some explosive information that i came across at a particular time when i come across them i know because they effect a definite change in the way I see myself and in the way I see my future. And I know once I can see it inside, I will see it outside. You remember Genesis chapter 11 verse 6? Funny human beings who sat down and said, we will build a city and a tower whose top will reach to heaven. And God Almighty made a statement in Genesis 11 verse 6. This they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. If he says he wants to die a driver, there's nothing anybody can do about it. He says he wants to die a plumber, there's nothing anybody can do about it. If that's what he has seen, that's what he will get. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The best form of education is self-education. An educated man is the one who knows the kind of knowledge he needs to fulfill his definite major purpose in life and he knows where to get it. Simple. He knows the kind of knowledge he needs to fulfill his definite major purpose in life and he knows how to get it. (laughs) Can you imagine me now going to buy a book on chemistry? (laughs) <laughs> ah. eh? so, <laughs> what contribution has that to my destiny I know just exactly the ones I need and I go for them education education most of what I learned in school was useless Mo- not all I thank God that, <laughs> uh, yes, a good portion of them were, but most, that is at least 51% were useless. At least 51% useless. It's not because they are not useful information, because, but because they have no direct correlation with my own personal destiny in life. And I just wish that those who designed the educational, educational system 
should have designed a means by which someone will discover his definite major purpose in life before he begins to pick the subjects he will, he will learn in school. By the grace of God, this church will build a university. We need to reorder it. Your first year in the university will take you through some courses that will help you to discover your definite major purpose in life, to discover your potentials. If you chose the wrong course, we relocate you. Neat. Don't waste your time in school. Nobody should fail in that university. Hallelujah. <laughs> Nobody can come in and say, this one is a failure. Nonsense. Nobody is a failure anywhere. To help him to locate his place. Let him excel there. Then you will be talking of invention. By the time the guy is graduating from school, your inventions are colliding with inventions in the same course. Hallelujah. <laughs> we'll build it from daycare to nursery to primary to secondary to university. We build. We build. In Jesus' name. Thoughts are powerful. Someone said thoughts are things. <clears throat> they ate it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thy words were found and I did eat them. Some people swallowed that one. Thoughts are things. The most powerful things in life are invisible. Thoughts are as real as this flower that I can touch. If we know how to handle them, they make a world of difference in our life. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. So God reckons with your thoughts as much as he reckons with your words. God reckons with your thoughts as much as he reckons with your words. Your word, your thoughts before God are as powerful as your words. God said, let's go down and confuse their language. Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Imagine, thought about. From the moment God looks into the heart of a man and he looks, sees the thoughts that he's thinking, he knows how far the man will go. So if God will ever affect the life of a man, he must first of all affect his thoughts, affect his imagination, affect his dreams, affect his sight inside. He must. He must. He must. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. God says, My ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. Since I jumped that verse one day and I ate it, my prayer has always been God. I don't want to think on this normal level again. I want to think like you. May God give you the grace from tonight to think like God the Father. Amen. To think like Jesus Christ. And to think like the Holy Spirit. Ah, that is a prayer. I thought you would say a big amen. No thought of poverty can cross the mind of the Father. It can't. So I desire that God should raise me up so that I think like that. If poverty cannot, the thought of poverty cannot survive in my mind, there is no form of poverty that can dominate my life again. Never. 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 If the thought of sickness cannot survive in the mind of Christ, no form of sickness can lay hold on his body. It's not possible. Same thing for us. If the thought of sickness, if we come to the point where the thought of being sick or lying on the bed or shivering cannot survive in our minds anymore, sickness cannot hold our bodies down. My health, the health of my body has appreciated with time, with the appreciation in my understanding of what my health is supposed to be. I've noticed that. Look, that's a very, that's a very simple case. 
Do you realize that the doctors have found out that 70% of illnesses that human beings experience can be traced to their minds? Originate from their minds. Physical sickness, 70% of physical sickness is a direct result of mind sickness. Mind sickness. <laughs> Many Christians say, Shh. Bro, how now? I'm strong. <laughs> Listen, when they say, I'm strong, you understand what they are saying? We have simply changed the language. We may not have changed the picture. When I'm strong now comes to the point where the, the picture it translates into your mind is a picture of sickness. That is not... God understands what you are saying. <laughs> Spirit language. Thoughts are things. And it's that thought that matters more. When Paul says, when I am weak, I am strong. He did not mean, he was, did not just mean to speak spiritual language. He was simply saying, the, physically speaking, there may be, seem to be weakness, but inside, the picture inside me is that of strength. So if we ask you, the way you say that I am strong, the picture you should give us is not that you are sick. It should be that you are healed. And we should just say, praise God and walk away. No, sorry. Well, uh, I say, mm, mm, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Even the way you say it. Say, How about this and that way? I'm believing God. I'm, I'm, I'm believing God. It, it is well. <laughs> it is well. <laughs> I say, well, uh, sorry. <laughs> it is well. <laughs> Communication is more than just mere words. It's there in spirit, it's there in gesture. Now, by the time you combine all of them, the picture you should produce in our minds is a positive picture about your situation. That's what tells you your mind has been transformed about it. Then let's see what you have seen. Sickness starts from the mind. Just by taking control of your mind, you have Stop the possibility of falling sick, 70%. Just by guarding up the loins of your mind and applying the scriptures that have to do with divine healing and divine health, you have cut down the probability of your falling sick by 70%. Guarding up the loins of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. <laughs> if heaven will just play up the thoughts of your mind right now, here, for all of us to see, we will know where you are going. We will know where you are going. Or if heaven will just play for us, the dominant thoughts of your mind in the past one week. We can tell you very easily where you will be in the next 10 years. Because the dominant thoughts of your mind define your future. Ah, but I love God. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Wonderful. Ah, God, I want to think like you. Go ahead. Or if heaven will just play for us the dominant thoughts of your mind in the past one week. We can tell you very easily where you will be in the next ten years. Because the dominant thoughts of your mind define your future. Ah, but I love God. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. 
Wonderful. Ah, God, I want to think like you. Does not the word say that I have the mind of Christ? Philippians 2 5 says, Let this mind be in you which also was in Christ Jesus. I want the mind of Christ. I want to think like God. I want to think like God. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected hand. I want to think good thoughts. I want to think thoughts of peace. Thoughts of good and not evil. Thoughts of peace. And thoughts of a great and wonderful expected end for my life. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. To give you an expected end. Great. So that tells me something. The quality of thoughts in your mind will determine the quality of your expectation. Amen? <laughs> the quality of information that flows into your mind, simple, will determine the quality of your expectation. You can never expect what you have never even heard about or what you've never known about. <laughs> It is the quality of information that flows into your mind that determines the quality of your expectation. Pure truth. I never, never ever expected that I could be healed without drugs until I came into the body of Christ and I read the Bible and I found out there was something called divine healing. I, it never crossed my mind. Once I saw it, start. In fact, the information that was permanent in my mind was this. Until I get a jab, the thing will not go. So I could take tablet, mm. but the jab. So they knew me at all. Once they bring me from school, they just bundle me <laughs> into the car. Doctor, I say, ah, he has come again. Well, eh? <laughs> and he will arrange the thing. Oh yeah. Hmm. So when new information flowed into my mind from the word, now I could develop a new kind of expectation to be healed directly by the power of God. What am I saying? <laughs> Watch very well the quality of information that flows through your mind. I have discovered that is why it pays you when you rob mind with those who have succeeded than you have. The quality of information that flows from their minds into your mind will help increase the quality of the expectation of your mind. I mean, I mean, I mean someone who has never heard before of Max and Spencer shirts. You think he will ever pray one day, God give me Max and Spencer. He has never even heard. So the, no picture except, the, the, except it's by a direct revelation from heaven. <laughs> a picture of Max and Spencer can never cross his mind. Never. Never. Do you know there are people that it is far to them? When you talk about traveling by air, it is far. It is for some categories of human beings. I have seen local traders. I'm telling you, they are millionaires. Except if Jesus works a miracle of transformation in their minds, they will never step a plane until they die. <laughs> They got breakthrough in some other area, how to do trade and get money, but they, there's no need, no expectation for anything else. Nothing. So the quality of information that enters your mind will determine the quality of your expectation. And expectation is the mother of manifestation. So what you expect is what you get. 
expectation is the mother of manifestation. So God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of an expected end. So the thoughts that dominate your mind will define and determine your expectations. Determine your expectations. Ah! I will forever be grateful to God for exposing my mind to the best in terms of ministry from all over the world. I will forever be grateful to God for that. Ah. If all that one had contacted were just some local experiences and local examples that one could see around, you would easily be congratulating yourself as a local champion. <laughs> but I'm telling you, every time I preach here, I, I have seen, I'm, I'm talking to more people than I can see with my eyes. Every time I preach, I'm talking to more people than I can see with my eyes. What I have seen, I told you just a little bit about it a while ago. I've seen the university as much as that. Secondary school, primary school. You are asking me where will we build it? Listen, that's not my business. When these people said they were going to build a tower, who stopped will reach heaven? Science now helps us to know where heaven is. Where is heaven? For as long as they could think it in their minds, God said it is possible. Where did they get the raw material from? Where would they get the cement from? Did God talk about that? God didn't say there is no cement they will use to build it. He said, once they can believe it in their minds, it is possible. So don't ask me where we will build it. Even if it is on the Atlantic Ocean, we will go and build it there. They are building oil platforms there. We will go and build our university there. Amen. Hallelujah! Be ye transformed. Metamorpho. The, the interesting thing is, is that same word was translated transfiguration in Matthew 17. When Jesus was transfigured on the mount. Transfiguration. And when Jesus was transfigured, you know what happened? Suddenly he started shining. Started shining. You will shine only to the degree to which your mind is transformed. Shining in God's kingdom depends on the transformation of the mind. I want to shine. I want to shine. <laughs> I want to shine. I want to shine. I want to shine. I just want to shine. And I'm going to shine. In fact, I'm shining. There is nothing hell can do about it. <laughs> Why some are seeing themselves driving cars, some are seeing themselves riding a motorcycle. There is nothing anybody can do about it. What you think is what you are. Listen, over time you get to learn that success is not what you have, but who you are. Success starts from inside. Success starts from inside. <laughs> I have given myself some hot challenges. What looks like a big mountain to some people is a normal natural course of life for some others just simply because of the level of their thinking the money that will be a major breakthrough for some people is the normal what they use for normal if I, pocket money eh, pocket money petty cash what some people will consider as a major breakthrough and for as long as in their minds it will be a major breakthrough it will always be a major breakthrough until you come to the point where you are thinking like, yes, that's my normal pocket money. Until you come to that point, I've noticed your life does not get ahead. Until you are beginning to think like, that's more money. That's more money. And you are acting it. <laughs> Expectation is the mother of manifestation. It does not change. 
until in your mind it has changed and your actions already producing it and your words reflect it. I found that it doesn't change. Some fly over it. Some struggle with it. Some don't bother because it is too much. <laughs> <clears throat> the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes it possible for us to fly over it. There is nothing in this world that is too big to overcome. So what am I saying? We keep saying Nigeria will move from the third world. Nigeria will prosper again. There will be great wealth in this nation unless you can personally see where what your own portion will be in it. Nobody can help you. Unless you can afford to see, afford to see Nigeria the way it will be, no change. There was a year like that, April of 1991, I was in the Lonekwara State. And one day I was praying and I saw a new dream, a new vision of the city. I have seen myself preaching to over a million people at the same time not on the same spot in different cities now if it wasn't that i had read from other people's books and i had seen this possibility it would have been difficult for me to conceive it but now i have seen that it is possible for you to preach in the largest stadium in the country and that there should be large screens in other stadia in other cities in the country and people will be receiving miracles there and they will answer altar call just by looking at the screen and it will come to pass because i have seen it be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind let me close on this and we'll continue next week <clears throat> In 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, the apostle writes, Beloved, sorry, in 3 John, not 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, 3 John, verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. <laughs> Two dimensions there. Your prosperity will only be to the degree to which you prosper in your mind. One, your health, the quality of your health cannot be better than the quality of your health in your mind. Simple. That you may prosper even as your soul prospers. I want you to understand tonight that for every man who is truly rich, the major part of his wealth is invisible. <laughs> yes, most of us are young here. You, and maybe we have top prosperity. Prosperity is having a fine car. You know, having some houses and having whatever. Let me tell you this. Tonight. That is a major cause of frustration in the world today. Major cause of frustration. Let me start by describing you yourself the way you are. The, the chemicals from the soil that make up your physical body, if we break down your body and we break it down into potassium and calcium, break it down into those different elements, oxygen, and we sell them, you will be what? Mm -hmm. So the only thing that is of value inside you immeasurable value is your spirit man and your soul which we can't touch with our hands the most valuable dimensions to this life are invisible remove the spirit man and the soul from the man his body turns into ordinary dust that goes back to the soil so stop let's stop running after the wrong thing the major part of a man's wealth a man who is truly wealthy are invisible are invisible are invisible and the major part of the wealth he has is in the knowledge that he has in his mind 
That is why when a man is truly rich, if you carry away all of the material blessings he has, in a shorter time than it took him to get the first set, he will reproduce another set. In a shorter time. Because it took him time to gather the knowledge the first time, but now he already has it. He will reproduce it for you. A man who is truly rich. So let your wealth begin from inside. Let your wealth begin from inside. How rich are you inside? How wealthy are you inside? my wealth outside has to try to catch up with the one inside it has to run off with it and that is why it has no choice but to come because inside on a daily basis i i make heavy investments in my in my spirit man and in my mind heavy colossal investments in my mind investments that will make me an attraction investments that will make it impossible for the world not to want to listen to me I make heavy investments on the inside. I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul, your soul, your soul prospers. One of the intangible forms of wealth that a man can have is what we call a positive mental attitude. A positive mental attitude that is major wealth major wealth a positive mental attitude ah there is nobody i have seen who has it who is not a wealthy man whether spiritually speaking mentally speaking or materially speaking a positive mental an attitude that believes that however whatever the situation may be it will work out to my advantage an attitude that has been developed and cultivated on the basis of the word when i see a man who has that i have seen a tremendously wealthy man when i see a man who cannot be moved or disturbed or overwhelmed by situations or circumstances a man who has gone beyond the realm of a of of confusion of being confused about the particular situation or circumstance when you see a man like that he's wealthy he's a very wealthy man when you see a man who has gone beyond hey hey what are we going to do now ah, oh when you see a man who has gone beyond that however bad the situation may be it will work out for my advantage it is for good when you see a man who has come to that point, that is tremendous wealth. Tremendous wealth. I remember the day God imparted some of this wealth into me. I was a young man. And I was weeping. That things were not working out the way I thought they would work out in my life. I was lagging behind in my plans. But nothing seemed to really be working out. And tears were dropping from my eyes. And the Spirit of God had me sit down and told me to pick a biro and paper and to write down all the good things he had done for me until that point. Especially the good things that were happening in my life as at that time. The positive dimension to my life. And I started writing. One, I'm 23 years old. Two, I'm already an ordained reverend minister. Three, I'm a site engineer on a 13 million naira project. Four, my family loves me. Five, people around love me. Six. <laughs> Six, I have a job. Seven, I'm healthy. Eight, after some time, I became disappointed in myself that I could be crying. I became disappointed in myself. God helps me to change my attitude. Then the Spirit of God told me, You are a believer, but some unbelievers are enjoying life more than you are enjoying. So you are so concerned about tomorrow that you are not enjoying today by the time you get to tomorrow you will find out that you should have enjoyed today because what i will do tomorrow i won't do today i will still do it tomorrow <laughs> immediately i saw it unbelievers will, will take themselves to the restaurant and eat have a nice time out and and, and, and you know 
tease themselves and, and, and you know, enjoy some good humor. And here was a born again, spirit filled, reverend minister of God. If you saw my face at that time, there were wrinkles on my forehead. 23 year old young man, wrinkles on my forehead. I was serious minded. I wonder what kind of a joke you will crack for me to laugh. Life is too serious for such things. <laughs> waste away my time joking and, 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 and jesting and the Holy Spirit told me when the few by the time the future comes you will find out that you only wasted your time worrying because what I will do in the future I will only do then your crying will not make me to do it now I have a program and nobody's going to rush me hey I relaxed Say it's true. <laughs> it's true. And I checked it. This is not bad for a 23 year old young man. This is not bad. Okay. That was when I started visiting restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm telling you, my younger brother and myself, we just <laughs> pick ourselves. Now I get my salary from the side. We just strolling somewhere sit down and have a nice time get out of the place and i started taking some of my friends out to eat ah eh? hallelujah what god gave me that day i will never lose again a positive mental attitude you see the problem was not with the physical environment around me i was a poor man in my heart some brick layers who were working on the site were richer than i was with the little salary they were taking, they were enjoying life more than me, site engineer, more than I was enjoying. I was a poor man. A poor man. But thank God, I am a rich man now. That is why I can confidently tell people the Yoruba proverb. If they pound yam,